catch, shoot the three of the big guy on him, and it's good. She'll catch, shoot the three off the wing, and it's good. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Yellow Jacket Report. I'm your host, Abby Seekman. In today's episode, we will be joined by cross country head coach Scott Walkinshaw along with a special guest athlete, along with head women's basketball coach Mark Norrie and head men's basketball coach Jeff Trumbauer. Joining me first is head women's basketball coach Mark Norrie. How are you doing, coach? I'm well. How are you? It's great <laughs> to be here. It's it's a great day. It is. <laughs> so what are you what are you looking forward to most about the season? Oh, just the spending time with the team and, and uh, getting better every day. Uh, the team we have uh, works extremely hard, and uh, we take pride in in uh, the effort we put forth. So just I, I love practice. I love practice. I love the the skill development side of things, and uh, you know we got kids that just. They like to put their hard hats on and they like to work. And, uh, you know, I appreciate that. Um, it's, it's here. Season's here. And we noticed a few new faces on the team. Could you tell us a little bit about those, those players that have joined? Yeah, we have uh, seven new kids. Um, you know, and I'm I, I just uh, real excited about them, but I, I'm more excited about how our upperclassmen have really done a nice job of helping them out, guiding them with some things um, and uh, you know those younger kids have, have really stepped into their roles. Some of the kids, Alicia Martinez out of Thunder Ridge, um, she's a kid, uh, won a state championship at high school. Uh, she shoots it well. Um, she's got to have a step in and, and uh, knock down some shots for us this season. Um, Hannah Cass is a kid that out of Newcastle that uh, about six foot, but she's really, you know, she can, she's long, she can guard, she can do a lot of different things. She's really uh, uh, a kid that's just coming into her own. Um, and then Gabby Dockstater is another kid that from Las Vegas, uh, Nevada, um, that she uh, plays her, she plays so hard and, and uh, she's getting better every day. Uh, she's a kid that's versatile, can play multiple positions. Um, and then the rest of them, I mean, we, we have certain kids, um, Abby Switzer and Cortez Standing Bear, um, Haley Schneider, those guys are, are uh, really, you know, they're working hard and, and uh, uh, doing a nice job for us, you know, they're, they're just, they just keep improving. And what are some of the things you would like to see from the team throughout the season? You know, that's a great question. Um, a lot. Uh, I, I think the biggest thing for me is just having them grow uh, mentally w is a big part of it. Um, to become, you know, servants, uh, to grow um, outside the court. Uh, it, it's cool to see, you know, we have a lot of kids that, uh, junior, seniors, that, that have really stepped it up. And just to see their development from when they first get here to the point they are now, it's just, it's awesome. And that's, that gives me the most gratification. Um, on the floor, you know, a lot of little things. I think, uh, you know, just the game of basketball. And, uh, if you do a lot of the little things well, um, you're going to have a good team. And, and, you know, sometimes, you know, you get a compilation of, of, of kids. Uh, they start pirating. They start doing different things that, that uh, you know, they, 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 they need to train out of their comfort zone to get better. But also they need to... Uh, let things happen too and understand that there's highs and lows in this game. And with the success of last season, making it to the second round of the NCAA tournament, uh, is there any experience that you are looking for that you'll be taking from last year and applying to this year? Totally. Uh, our team is, it's all about, you know, the development of kids and um, we have tremendous leaders. We have a tremendous group of uh, older kids that have, have really stepped it up. Um, Cassidy Scott, Taylor Trocomoynen, Sierra Toms, Shine Balster, um, Rachel Erickson, Julia Siemens, um, Keely Bertram. Um, all these kids ha have really uh, matured over the summer. Um, 
and expecting good things. I mean, we lost Bailey Kuzer and we lost Christine Thorne and, uh, you know, a big scoring punch, about 24 points a game. So we need kids to step up and, uh, you know, not only were those two, you know, really good players, but they were just great leaders and more than anything, um, our, our kids have really, they understand that and uh, they've done a good job um, uh, attaining that new role. What will you be looking forward to at your first in-season game? Good question. Um, a lot. Um, but with that, you know, we, we need to be able to, uh, the thing about women is that they, they want to be perfect. And the thing we have to understand going into this game is, you know, we, we want to fail harder. Um, that doesn't mean we want to lose or do all that, but we want to, we want to go into this thing being fearless and being, having the right mentality and not thinking we're all that. But on the other side too, knowing that, that we have a chance to be pretty good. And uh, so having that fearless mentality, not being scared to make mistakes um, and having each other's back. And, and uh, you know, that's the best part of this team. That's why I love coaching this team is that they, they really have each other's back and, and uh, you know, just excited to see who steps up and makes plays this year. Well, thanks for joining us, Coach. Stick around, we'll be right back with head men's basketball coach, Jeff Trumbauer. There's a lot of things that go into building a successful car dealership. It starts with a great product. Ford, the best-selling automotive brand in America. A sales staff that understands the product inside and out. And a service department with highly trained technicians. All these parts working together make up White's Canyon Ford in Spearfish. Winner of both the President's Award and one Ford Elite Award from the Ford Motor Company for three consecutive years. Ranking us as one of the top 60 Ford stores in America for sales and service satisfaction. Today's car shoppers are smarter than ever. That's why Junix and Spearfish developed hometown pricing. We price our vehicles against the competition so you save time and money. Our vehicles are repriced weekly, so check back to get the best deal at Junix on West Jackson in Spearfish. Welcome back to the Yellow Jacket Report. Joining me now is head men's basketball coach Jeff Trumbauer. How are you, coach? Doing well. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. So go ahead and just tell us a little bit about the sneak peek event that you guys did that the sure. men's and women's basketball team hosted. So that was uh, basically our version of Midnight Madness. Uh, it was on uh, the uh, first night of the first day that we're allowed to practice and, and uh, just a fun evening. Um, we had a pretty good turnout, had a lot of people show up, and uh, both the men's and women's team was able to, to play a little bit, have some fun, and give uh, a little glimpse of what our teams look like this year. And what are you looking for from the team this season? Well, you know, it, we, we have a lot of new faces. We, we, we certainly do. So uh, really, probably no different than any year. We're just trying to get better on a daily basis. And uh, we've been talking a lot about focusing on the process of improving and uh, letting the results take care of themselves. But let's just, let's try to get better every day. And, uh, and I think thus far, 14 practices and a couple of scrimmages, that's exactly what we're seeing. And you said you guys have some new faces. Can you tell us a little bit about the team that, you know, the sure. new faces that have come in? Well, we have, we have 17 players on the roster. We have five returning players that have played a minute for BH and so that that means we're we're very much overwhelmed by young and new faces we have 12 other players that haven't put on a uniform one of them's a junior and uh, and then one is a sophomore and then we have 10 freshmen so a lot of learning a lot of uh, teaching taking place right now but it's a great group I haven't enjoyed uh, the first two weeks of practice like this uh, as much as I have this year at any point in my career and what are some of the goals that you guys have set for this season to, to improve upon compared to last year? Yeah, well, it, it's, it's funny. We're, 
I don't think you can be both. Uh, we're, we, I read uh, some interesting things. Uh, there's some great books out there, but we, we, we can't be focused on the process and really have all these goals that we're trying to attain. Um, I mean, that's nice. We, we'd like to improve as a team. Uh, we'd like to get to the RMAC playoffs, so these things. We'd like to get to the NCAA tournament. But that's not as important as the process that's going to get us there. So, like I said, we, we, those things are fun, important. We want to do them. But we're really much more focused, not even on winning games, but on playing a, on a level of basketball that's going to allow us to have that success. And what will you be looking forward to the most at your first in-game in season? Well, I, you know, I think our guys will be excited to put the uniforms on and play against somebody else. But uh, I, it'll be good to see. I, in our two scrimmages, we've seen very different styles of defense. So I think every opponent that we play, they're going to throw different things at us. And it'll be interesting to see our guys respond. Um, we've been very, very competitive and uh, in our practices and I want to see us play the way we practice and, and carry that over so if, if we can do that I, I think we're going to have a lot of fun this year. And what's the competition like for the RMAC? I know it's a very competitive conference. Yeah. You know it's so hard to know because uh, I, I honestly I, I get nervous when I start reading recruiting reports and signing day results from all these schools so I don't even look at it. it that stuff drives me nuts so I just uh, I know you're in and you're out. It's an awfully good league. In my assessment, I think that the RMAC has been a little top heavy. And now uh, I think maybe the bottom half is starting to rise a little bit. And you're going to see that it's a little more balanced and, and that uh, from, from 1 through 15 in the RMAC, it's not going to be easy. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's this RMAX competitive. Yeah, very very good league, and you've had your mainstays: uh, Metro State, Colorado Mines, uh, CSU Pueblo, teams like that that have been good year in and year out, and they're going to be continue to be good. But I also think that you're seeing other programs that that are improving. Uh, we've had a couple of coaching chase, changes within the league. Regis last year, Shadron this year, and uh, and I think that you're going to see some good things coming from those programs. So uh, I, I just you know. I know it's going to be good. I know the league's going to be good. In a lot of ways, like you know, some of these power conferences out there, where every night it's a good opponent and you got a good battle. So you, you just really try to focus on coaching your team best you can and playing as hard as you can. Well, thanks again, Coach, for joining us today. Stick around. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Truck buyers know there's only one place for your next four-wheel drive truck, Junix and Spearfish. Find a great selection of Ram 1500, 2500, or 3500s with hometown pricing. For your next Ram truck, look to Junix on West Jackson and Spearfish. Welcome back to the Yellow Jacket Report. We are now going to hand it off to our sports information director, Ryan Hilgeman. Thanks, Abby. And I'm joined by head cross country coach, Scott Walkinshaw. Coach, how are we doing today? Doing great, Ryan. How are you? It's a great day. It's a great day. You guys just got back from uh, Denver, Colorado for the South Central Regional. Uh, men's team finished sixth overall and the women's team 12th. Uh, let's just touch on the men's team at first. Yeah, the men ran first and really I thought we had a great day and I, I think it helped with the women, you know, just because the men did run so well. Uh, really pleased, you know, after the conference meet where we didn't have a good meet at all. Uh, thought we came back and just ran lights out. Just really close to qualifying a team. Uh, bittersweet for the fact that, uh, you know, Jonah made it in individually, but we were just so close. Um, 
just from a team standpoint and a little frustrating, uh, a little hard, but when you run really well, those kind of things are a little bit easier to take. If we would have ran like we ran at conference and missed it by seven points, that would have been really, really difficult. But to run really well, sometimes you just got to live with it. That's sport. And, uh, you know, I think we can uh, hold our heads high. Um, you know, Jonah ran well, Kendall Murray had the race of his life. They both finished higher than they did at the conference meet. Uh, senior Aaron Shoney ran fantastic. And just the team as a whole. Uh, we lost Josh Davis earlier in the season, and had we had him, that might have made a difference. But, you know, you just can't look back at that kind of, that kind of stuff. So, all in all, uh, very pleased. All right. And the women's team, they had a basically a 10-position improvement from a year ago, uh, led by Christine Thorne. Can you talk about the women's team? Yeah, I just I thought we ran really, really tough. Uh, you know, we were ninth in the conference meet. And you would think that with the good teams from the Lone Star and the Heartland, we're going to finish further down than that. And again, I think the way the men ran uh, kind of kind of showed to the women that we could run well at uh, in Denver, and and we did. Uh, Christine had an outside chance for making it uh, individually, and she came up uh, just short of that. Uh, but her place was really good. She was 23rd. Uh, we had three athletes, her Kendall and Jonah, that were ended up all region. And uh, you know Shelby Stoltz had a nice meet. She had been sick almost to the point where I didn't know if she was even going to run. Uh, we lost Tori uh, more earlier in the season. And had we had Tori, I think we would have finished even 10th or 11th. So, uh, you know, just pleased. And the girls felt, uh, the gals felt good about their race. Uh, for the viewers at home that may not know about the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference and the South Central region in general, uh, five teams came out of the conference to make it to the national meet. Can you just talk about how tough it is to be in this region? Well, it's tough. It, and, it, and it, you know, last year we had to be in the top six to get in, and we ended up sixth. And then this year it was only five teams, so we knew we had to be in the top five on the men's side. And we ended up seventh at the conference meet. So it's, it's almost unrealistic to expect that you're going to go from 7th to 5th when you add the Lone Star and the Heartland. And we knew West Texas A&M was going to be the, the team to beat for that 5th spot. Um, and so, you know, to finish 7th and then come back and get 6th and almost make it, you know, really close to 5th was great. But the first four teams are ranked in the top eight nationally. Um, I think Adams and Mines are probably ranked one, two, I would guess, if, unless Grand Valley State's there. So we are in the toughest, uh, toughest region, toughest conference, bar none. And uh, to give you an example, we beat uh, Moorhead State early in the season at GRIAC really pretty bad, and they got in with their region. And uh, Jonah Tyson did make it in as an individual. Can you talk about Jonah's season? Yeah, he had a great come, you know, he had a great. Uh, bounce back from the conference meet. Um, I think he was 37th, I believe, at, at conference. Granted, he wasn't feeling well, and he hadn't felt good from about midweek on. So uh, for him, you know, it's hard to get a read on Jonah. He's a pretty quiet individual, and you don't know if he's feeling great or if he's feeling a little under the weather. Uh, but I could tell really quickly into the race, he got behind the kid from Shadron that had finished 11th at the conference meet and just uh, ran with him for a bit and finally passed him and, and moved up. Uh, he was in 24th with about a mile to go and just moved all the way up to 13th and beat some really good co uh, conference runners. And uh, Jonah will run on November 19th in St. Leo, Florida. That's two weeks. Uh, what will he do to prepare for the meet? You know, right now we're just gonna take it easy. He ran a little bit yesterday, we ran this morning, but we won't do a workout till Wednesday. Uh, I did get on the the internet looked at the the course uh we're going to kind of talk about the course and try to simulate that in some workouts but um you know it, it won't be a lot i mean we'll do some a couple quality sessions but all in all he's just so fit right now uh i would i'd be okay if it was this weekend but you know when you travel that far and you run a 10k it does take some time to to bounce back from it all right. Uh, thank you coach walkinshaw you had a great season and we still got one more meet to go and look forward to what the indoor and outdoor track and field season has from distance runners. Definitely. Thanks, Ryan. Here at Quick Signs, we can make canvas prints to vehicle wraps to anything in between. We have an experienced design team that can start a project from scratch or we can enhance an existing one. 
A wrap can be used to advertise your business with minimal maintenance. You can either wrap your trailer, you can wrap your vehicle, or anything that you want to help get your message across. At Quick Signs, we have a high quality standard for our products. We expect that our customers have the same standards when it comes to their marketing materials that they want to provide to their customers. Commitment puts you above everything else. It looks you straight in the eye. Commitment pledges to see you through to the end. To support you. To be that reassuring face in the crowd. The one who's always there. First Interstate Bank. That's what commitment looks like. And welcome back to the Yellow Jacket Report. I am joined by senior distance runner Aaron Shoney. Aaron, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Uh, we're glad to have you here. Uh, you were just got back just with Coach Walkinshaw. We just chatted with him a little bit ago. Uh, you guys had the region meet. The team missed qualifying for nationals by seven points. Uh, you did end up beating teams that defeated you at the RMAC championship. Can you just talk about your experience at the region meet? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I've ran here two years ago, and so it was kind of nice to go back and kind of get some revenge because I definitely ran pretty poorly that sophomore year I was here. So that was a lot of fun. And uh, coming out of the conference meet, we were definitely pretty upset about how we performed there. And so to come back and beat, you know, Mesa and Shadron and, and by a lot was, uh, I just felt a lot better about it. And I know I ran a way better race. And so leaving the region meet, I was pretty happy with how we performed. And I'm more than happy not to be going to nationals because I left it all out there. So, uh, and you've kind of had quite the experience as a runner over the years. You were the alternate at, with your high school team at the state championship, and then uh, you came to Black Hill State and walked on. And last year, you got to experience the national championship experience. Uh, Could you talk to us about that? Yeah, I always joke with people. You know, I'm I'm not a runner. I was. If you looked at some of my times in high school, you'd probably be laughing a little bit. And so. Just like, I like to be a testament to hard work, you know, and listen to Coach Walkinshaw. You do what he tells you, you're going to have success. And so, yeah, it was awesome. I talked to my coaches last year, and just hearing how, them, how much I've improved, they were super excited. And, yeah, going to Nationals is awesome, and I got to be the third guy on the team. And I thought performed well, well above what I should have. Just had a great meet and peaked at the right time. So that was a lot of fun. The National Meet was put on really well. And just being able to be in that elite of runners and stuff was just an honor so and as a senior you've got an indoor season and outdoor season for track and field left uh, what are you looking forward to accomplish during these two seasons yeah so I've gone just four years straight so I got indoor and outdoor still and I love track you know cross country still got my heart but uh, I've got some PRs I want to take down obviously and so just be able to get a lot of that done and do well at the conference meet because yeah we do have one of the tougher conferences in the na nation so just being able to, you know, place better than I have in the past and just, you know, prove to others, you know, what BH is doing here is working and kind of be a representative of the program and run as good as I can, so. And uh, when you graduate in May, you're going to graduate with a biology degree. Uh, what do you plan to do with that? Yeah, I've applied to PA school, so we'll see if I get any calls back and hopefully I'm crossing my fingers, so see where I end up in next year, so. <laughs> Sounds good. And uh, you said that you're you're not a runner compared to your times from high school and all that. What do you say we uh, have a race here? I bet you can beat me. <laughs> I, I sure hope so now, but if you would have asked me five <laughs> years ago, you probably would have kicked my butt. So, <laughs> Well, thank you very much for joining the show, Aaron. And that'll do it for this week's episode of the Yellow Jacket Report. For anything and everything Yellow Jacket Athletics, go to bhsuathletics.com. I hear it's a pretty cool new-looking website.